In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create better threshold effects for your Brutalism posters. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs. I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. And there's probably something you struggle with when you design your own Brutalism posters. I know I have. And that's using a threshold effect on your photos or whatever it is that you're using. And only to find out that the threshold effect looks not that good, I guess. Anyways, I found some solutions for this, which I want to go over with you today in this video. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. So we're here in Photoshop and I picked two images that I can demonstrate this on. These are two 3D renders, but this will basically work for any photo or whatever it is that you want to use, even flat icons. I have this render from my Metal Heart Essentials pack and I have this render from my Metal Morphosis pack. And one of them has a lot of contrast, this one, and this one doesn't really have that much contrast as you can see. But the thing is, if we add in threshold to this, you can see that there's a lot of difference between black and white, so this will probably work pretty well. But depending on where you move your slider, if you want it to be a little bit lighter, you can see there's a lot of white in there as well. And on this other render, this is not really going well at all. It's really flat. It just looks a little bit too flat. And there's actually a way to solve this. And it's fairly easy. Let's go into the first one. And the only thing that we need to do is make sure that you have a smart object. If you don't, just right click and go to convert to smart object. Then go to filter, noise, add noise. And as you can see, the more noise you add, you already add a lot of pixel data in there and the threshold will pick up on this pixel data and of course act accordingly. So this is with the noise and this is without the noise. And this works for every grain texture, noise texture that you want to use in here. For example, another way to add in grain will be to go to filter, filter gallery, and then under texture there's also a grain option. Let's go for the clumped grain because it's a little bit larger. And if we lower the contrast, I think there's more pixel data in there. And as you can see, this gets like a really nice clumpy detail to your render. Let me show you how this works on this part of the render because it's just almost all white now. So again, let's go to filter, noise, add noise. And there you go. And we'll go to the filter gallery again. Click OK and we'll hide the noise for now. And well, this works a little bit less, I guess, but depending on the contrast and intensity that you have, you'll get more of it as you can see right here. Another way to do this is by simply adding normal textures. So in my Dreadlabs Metal Heart Essentials, there's actually some grain textures in there as well. So these go paired with multiply and screen. And I'm going to show you why in a second. So let's just hide the threshold for now. We'll set the screen blend mode of the screen texture here to screen and this one to multiply. And we'll just remove the smart filters for a second. And as you can see, this adds grain to our whole composition, but we can use a clipping mask to, to only, do it only on the render. Um, the reason why I'm using screen and multiply at the same time is because the screen will apply to the darker parts of your image. As you can see, let me just zoom in here. There's not a lot of detail in here, but now there's a lot of grain in the darker parts. And the same goes for the multiply one. So if we hide this, this is almost plain white. And if we add this, there's a lot of random texture in there and if we then just show it on the threshold compared to nothing there's actually a lot of detail in there and you can just manually change this by increasing the contrast on your textures like i'm doing right now like this so let's just get back to the noise real quick for a second because there might be something that you've been wondering if you zoom out, you don't really see it that much anymore. And that's just because all of this noise data that you can see, it's all just simply one pixel. A way that I use to kind of fix this is to go to Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic. And the cell size will basically be the size of the noise pixels in your design. In my case, it, let's just do four. So the effect will be kind of drastic. This gives for a cool effect on its own, I think. But as you can see, the like blots of detail and noise are just like increased in size like heavily. And all you need to do to like kind of smoothen out those like blocky pixels is just add in like a little bit of a blur. I'm just gonna go with a blur of one. Now you can just gradually increase it. But if we zoom in now, the pixel effects are kind of gone. 
but if we just hide all of the smart filters there's definitely like some more noise in there and of course we can always make the noise more intense if we want to so i hope this quick tip was useful to you and i hope you realize that by using textures noise filters and manipulating those in the correct way will actually help you with making your threshold effects on your brutalism posters a lot better. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on it, leave a comment down below if you have your own suggestions how to make better threshold effects on your brutalism posters. And if you haven't done that already, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because I have over hundreds of tutorials all related to graphic design niches such as brutalism design. If you want to connect with other designers and learn from them, don't forget to join our Discord server. The link for all of those things will be in the description down below. Without any further ado, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.